Okay, good morning. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and uh, we have Eric Gill. He joins us today from Unite Here Local 5. Welcome to the show, Eric. Aloha. Aloha. Boy, you are the man. I mean, if there's anybody central covering all the bases in, in the tourism industry, in the hotel and hospitality industry, it's you. Uh, you must be working your buns off right now, trying to keep everything together. How's your day going? <laughs> well, no. Nothing bad happened so far today. So. <laughs> <laughs> How many members you have out there, Eric? How many members who are who are in distress? Well, we got thousands of members uh, simultaneously unemployed uh, in a, a huge and unprecedented meltdown of our industry uh, here and across the country. And you know, our, our union, of course, represents people all across the mainland as well. Uh, so we've had. Uh, let's put it this way. We spent three weeks um, uh, helping our members do process, processing their unemployment. Uh, the state system was woefully unprepared, crashed, still crashed. Uh, and what you see the state workers now doing, you know, to get online and help people process, we've been doing for weeks. And uh, so, you know, basically our union has for, you know, most of the past month been engaged mostly in social service uh, essential worker work uh, and my uh, staff has been working on behalf of the state to 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 do those things so I, I think you know we've been able to register our members uh, that you know we had a big load we had to uh, reorganize our staff uh, and uh, distribute calls out to people's homes uh, and be able to return thousands of phone calls and work people through, you know, sometimes uh, difficult online processing in the face of crashing of systems and so on. And so uh, we've been we've been mostly working on trying to take care of the folk and see what we can do to help them salvage something of their lives. Um, and we were mostly through that piece. Um, of the unemployment assistance because we've managed to get uh, most of our members done. Um, and so that'll be a big relief when people start getting their checks, which many people are still waiting. Uh, yeah. Am I, right to, am I right to say that the phenomenon that has been so often described, namely that people do not have a, a safety net, they, they don't have money in the bank, they don't have uh, resources that will carry them for more than a few weeks. Is that true uh, in, in any substantial part for, uh, Hotel workers? Yes. Look, I mean, we we had a big strike a couple years ago, and it was about one job being enough. And the truth is, most of our members uh, are now laid off from multiple jobs. Wow. And, so, and so the, you know, nobody nobody's making it great in Hawaii on, uh, I'm proud of the amount of wages and benefits we've been able to generate for our members, but the truth is <clears throat> people still have to work two or three jobs and to get by and now they don't have two or three jobs. So it is a, you know, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a collapse of people's uh, hopes and dreams and expectations. And, and it's, you know, it's a massive disaster in terms of, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of families are are now in duress and distress, and many many thousands of people, uh, thankfully not yet, including most of my hotel members, are out of medical benefits as of April first. You know, and and have they been terminated? Is that what the hotels did? Well, uh, I'm, none of our hotels have said people are terminated. We've had different things. We're suspending operations. We're closing the hotel. Uh, they're effectively closed, except for a, a few places. Um, and um, in some cases, they took away people's badges and and locker keys, and uh, you know, we're scratching our heads. Uh, but truthfully, uh, I'd like I would like it to be true that you say that. Uh, I'm in the middle of everything. The truth is, these hotel companies are not engaging with us in any meaningful way at this point. Uh, so we, you know, they are not paying medical into the trust fund. They are not uh, 
employing people uh, or paying people's wages. Uh, they basically just closed down and threw everybody on the street. And, um, and we are now uh, insuring them and in providing health and welfare insurance out of the reserves of the health and welfare fund because the hotels uh, who are the employers in the fund have refused to put any money in to cover people's health and welfare. So we're burning our reserves. And um, How long can you keep on going like that? Uh, well, that's a good question. And many things depend on it. Um, you know, for example, our reserves are held in various investment vehicles. And so far, the value has held up. Uh, however, uh, that's unpredictable, obviously. And um, selling investments to try to go to cash is also unpredictable at this point. Uh, or you'd end up lock, uh, locking in losses and so on and so forth. So the value of our reserves is is obviously a, a, a concern. The burn rate of the reserves is also a, a concern uh, because in essence, we're uh, providing medical benefits for people um, with no income to support that. And therefore we're just burning our, you know, burning our reserve tank. Mm -hmm. And so that's a question of how long this goes on. And it's a question of how well we control, control costs. <clears throat> and all, a lot of those things uh, are hard to tell right now. Uh, obviously, the uh, we are fortunate in that our uh, trust fund is uh, self-insured, so we can just pay claims. So in other words, we don't have to pay premiums for most of our members on a monthly basis. And obviously, right now, with uh, many medical services restricted, dentists are closed, and so on and so forth, uh, you know, the, the number of claims is probably you know much less than usual right now but we won't really know until the billings come in and we can add them all up am, am i right am i right to conclude that if somebody is sick somebody has a coronavirus among your membership uh you're covering medical expenses at least for now we are covering medical expenses for our members yes uh and uh we have already taken action to do so through september uh so i i believe that's probably the most security of workers in Hawaii in terms of the health and welfare benefits. Um, you know, other unions and employers have paid medical through May, for example. Um, but our employers haven't paid anything, uh, even though in uh, some of their other operations where there is no trust fund with uh, union members having saved up these reserves, uh, then they've paid directly and, and insured people through May, but at the same time have refused to put anything in to cover our members and their well, it strikes me as uh, worth a question. Namely, you have hotels and you know other institutions in your in your group of employers. Uh, you know, of all sizes and shapes and kinds. Some of them are local, obviously. Some of them are national. Some of them have you know very shallow pockets uh, and they can't go on without revenue. Others have deep pockets and they can. Um, but but are you are you saying that all of them have somehow magically come to the same conclusion? They're not going to pay these benefits. They're not going to keep the health benefits going. They've all decided the same way. With with one exception so far, I'm happy to say um, the Waikiki Resort is a small hotel. It's a Korean owned hotel, and they have uh, committed to paying uh, enough uh, hours in uh, to. To, to pay the minimum number of hours in to maintain medical, at least so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and so because our, our members work on a, our fund has a tail, if you will. So, so people have several months of coverage, uh, which the, the fund now has to cover uh, in any event. That was the structure of a fund. So nobody had to do that. Uh, and in fact, the employers have taken advantage of that. Since since the fund reserves are covering our members, they've uh, they've decided decided that they don't need to put any money in, and of course, on a short term strategy, would, okay maybe, but without any money coming in and money going out, sooner or later we run out of money and are unable to insure our people, and that and that would transfer thousands and thousands of people somewhere. There is no way that. Quest or any other uh, insurer can match our efficiency. Uh, we have our own network of contracts with <clears throat> hospitals and providers, and we are self-insured. So 
we can pay claims and, and, and do the most efficient expensing of people's health and welfare benefits of anybody out there. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, but we need money to come in in order to keep doing it. And uh, right now, we don't have money coming in. Uh, and so, of course, it's a concern since uh, it's not clear when or how hotels will reopen, uh, how many workers will go back to work by when, uh, when they do go back to work, uh, how much money will be generated for, for their benefits uh, in that regard. But, you know, I, I don't anticipate that hotels will suddenly uh, resume with 98% occupancy and everybody working. So we have, to, we have to have resources to cover our people over the long term. And the, the truth is, I, I find it despicable that the employers have uh, chosen to, in essence, rob, uh, steal our reserves, which workers have put aside through their own decision-making by consciously uh, awarding more of their available money to uh, health and welfare over the last 10 years. And we built up these reserves. And this was all workers' decisions to defer part of what otherwise would become wages. And now the employers are stealing that uh, and evading their responsibility to the workers they just laid off. I, I'm very disappointed with the industry. and. Um, I would point out that this is a function of our rotten capitalist system, if you will. Our owners are the biggest of the big. The owners of the hotels are big, huge REITs. They're big, huge equity, private equity companies. And they've been, they've been sipping at the public trough all these years. And now, and now they're in Washington trying to grab all the candy falling from the federal piñata as trillions of dollars of federal money. That's what they're concentrating on is how to get money for themselves. And really, none of them really care about us. And that's shown in the congressional legislation, nothing for health and welfare so far. Uh, and um, what, about, what about the individuals? Are there any federal benefits coming out of the 2.3 trillion to your members? Are they getting checks? You see any checks, Eric? Well, I'm, I've heard that some people have received stimulus checks. Um, it, it's hard for us to quantify that and figure that out. We hear of people having gotten some. Obviously, the, um, the uh, additional unemployment insurance, you know, the additional 600 bucks a week, um, that's obviously of help uh, when people receive it. I don't think anybody's got that additional amount yet. Um, and the fact is, you know, if you're laid off of two jobs, you can collect, <laughs> you only can collect so much unemployment. And so even with uh, that extra money, people are uh, certainly becoming uh, poorer and poorer. Well, I want to return to the point about what happens on the, on the restart. I mean, as and when, and to the extent there is a restart. Uh, first, the first question I have on that is, um, and we touched on this before the show began, is, um, you know, there should be, I, I think there should be a discussion around the table on this between labor and management about how things are going to restart. Um, because the industry, and we can cover this too, will not be the same. It'll be different. So has there been any, any meetings, any discussions around the table? Have you been brought in? Because certainly you're an essential element of any restart, no? Well, certainly, I, I would agree with you on that. I, I would right now the hotels are magnificently unresponsive. Um, in fairness to them, they've laid off their HR departments and the people that we usually deal with. And in fairness to them, you know, everybody's shook up and you know dislocated by this, and 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 their numbers are in a trash can too. You know, obviously, hotel revenues suddenly shutting off uh, affects everybody. And so management obviously is affected as well. And they've, um, they've been laid off as well as hotels have closed. But the truth is we've been, it's been very difficult to get discussions going with the hotels. Um, we attempted here uh, to get, to engage, you know, our big chains, the Marriott's and Hilton's. And in essence, um, because we are one union and we have uh, similar identical uh, issues in all of the cities we operate, you know, from the East Coast uh, over to Hawaii and in Canada too. 
um, they, they basically wouldn't make a deal with us on a local union basis. And so we attempted and are attempting to meet with them on a national basis. Um, and that so far hasn't gone anywhere. So I, I, I would, I think the industry is basically kind of in shell shock and in denial in certain amount and, and perhaps naively think that they can just sit tight. Uh, certainly the reopening is an important piece. Um, you know, for example, I think it's nuts that the city still is advancing permits to build more hotels. Um, is that right? But, right now? Yeah. You know, and, and, okay, that's what they do, right? You know, developers do it in permits, but the argument to put a no hotel from January to now is completely changed. Obviously, we shouldn't add new inventory when we will have a hard time filling up the hotels we got. And the truth is some hotels probably won't reopen. Um, we don't know what their plans are. They don't know uh, and aren't telling us. And so we've, we've, you know, we're kind of in a limbo, uh, but that doesn't mean that we should leave the question of reopening uh, to the side. And so we are in, we are engaging in discussions, and I'm I'm encouraged that uh, you know that that we will be part of uh, discussions in regard to that because I think it's very important uh, reopening the hotels in this COVID environment um, means that we have to embrace the fact that our clientele and their needs have substantially changed. We're not going to get a lot of resort guests in this year. I, I just don't know how that can happen. Well, what's a resort guest there? A resort guest is our usual guest. You know, someone who comes on vacation and wants Mai Tais and tour groups and parasailing and all that stuff. And none of that stuff is available right now. Um, and that's not what our current guests need. What our current guests are basically essential workers um, and people who are seeking lodging uh, in the pandemic where they're, and they need lodging. Individuals need lodging <clears throat> if they're going to uh, quarantine away from family to keep their families safe. And, yes. and healthcare workers need lodging, you know, when they travel to assist other areas to try to contain outbreak. Yes. And, and, and essential workers need lodging. And that's what we do. Uh, the problem is we're not set up to do to serve that kind of guests right now. Uh, instead, I think hotels have, uh, are moving too late to um, you know to, to really address the needs of these new guests, which is primarily a place of security and safety that they can rest and and recuperate or quarantine. Well, that, that's a great way to to, to start the startup <clears throat> to prepare for the startup. You know, repurpose the hotels to the business that is at hand, that is essential workers business. Uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but potentially homeless business, uh, all the people who need lodging. Uh, and that way you have some staff coming back to work it. You have the, the hotels are staying, staying in operation, if you will, which is good for them. Uh, and that helps them ramp up as and when the resort guests start coming back. Am I right? Well, yeah, and I and I think even the resort guests are going to have different needs now, and we're going to have different needs. Resort guests, you know, when they start coming back, when we start allowing them to come back, you know, right now, obviously, the state is doing everything they can to discourage, uh, you know, tourists from arriving, and for obvious reasons that we all can uh, share. You know, so the question is going to be, you know, when are people going to be allowed to travel, and under what conditions should Hawaii let people in and also what conditions are other places going to insist on Hawaii being in order to receive our guests back home safely. It won't do us any good if our safety uh, protocols are insufficient to, to, for example, to satisfy uh, the needs of Japanese tourists because obviously Japan could just quarantine them all coming home. Uh, if they don't feel that we are a safe environment. So that, you know, we need to really concentrate on that. Our Hawaii and our industry need to be perceived as a place of safe refuge for guests, whether they be essential workers or when travelers go, you know, I can tell you, 
I'm I'm a guy who traveled a lot up till the end of January, <laughs> and um, I'm not unhappy that I'm not traveling that much now. But when I go to a hotel room, I'm not going to want to see a bedspread. I'm not going to want to see a duvet. I'm not going to want to see skirts on on the bed. I'm not going to want to see robes hanging in the, in in the, the closet. I'm not going to want to see you know five pillows on on the bed that I'm not sure when they were last washed. Those are things that I think any discerning traveler are going to be looking to see. And so, but but so far, many of those measures haven't been taken even by the hotels that are operating. And um, there's only a few of our hotels that are operating and we are attempting to address uh, the safe operations uh, in those places. Well, how do you do that? How do you address the safe operations in those places? I mean, now and as we go forward. Well, look, I mean, I, I think there's many aspects to that, and it affects the operations of the hotel, you know, from check-in to check-out and in between. Um, but, but to put it this way, I think there's certain things you can do now that need to be done in order to enhance uh, safety. And the first thing, in my view, is you know, you, you get stuff out of the room that can't be efficiently cleaned and you don't put things in the room that you're not going to launder or throw out upon checkout. Got it. And that's not what they do now, right? That's not what they do. And, and um, you know, even long before this, you know, bedspreads were already perceived as, a, you know, a nest of germs. And now the germs could be a lot more da uh, dangerous. So, you know... We've got to be able to wash everything. And so, you know, those are just some of the things about the room cleaning. But mm -hmm. the fact is, to say, to have a safe hotel, you have to have both workers and guests safe. You know, there's no safe hotel if workers don't have the proper protective equipment. How do you do that? What, how, do you make, uh, how do you make it safe for one of your members uh, in a hotel that's still operating or in a startup economy later? What do you do mm -hmm. for him? Is it masks? Uh, I mean, are you yeah. interested in testing? Uh, yeah. Are you uh, tell me about how you would protect your workers? Well, first of all, you know, there's any number of guidelines out there. The CDC changes theirs all the time. It appears to be kind of politically influenced. You know, if the Trump administration didn't do a good job getting masks, the CDC says, "Well, you don't need those N95 masks after all." So we, when we, when we had to make a decision, meaning uh, the union and our allied uh, entities that. We, we set up a quarantine station for the state and we went, you know, we went as far as we could to practically to garb people up for cleaning. And so, yes, I mean, the minimum is, is a mask and gloves, but we didn't stop there. You know, there, you also are well advised to wear safety goggles to keep, you know, safety glasses to keep things from splashing your eye. Uh, in, in the case of the quarantine station, which was, intended and is housing homeless people in, resp in re response to your earlier question. Uh, we have flat plastic face masks and we have Tyvek suits as well. And so, so basically the worker can clean that room, a guest checkout room, if, you know, and, and can clean it with basically uh, full covering and then take off that protective equipment when they're done cleaning the room and, and work with a uniform that doesn't have stuff on it. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's not what hotels are doing right now. Uh, we're gathering information. Uh, most of the hotels currently operating are not under Local 5's contract, and I don't have any particular right to demand information from them, but we're gathering what we can. And the hotels have not been consistent in providing masks or a sufficient number of masks. I don't think people have, you know, hotels haven't... Uh, let the room sit for 24 hours. In some cases they have, but I'm not sure that they're all doing that. You're supposed to do that so that the thing can settle. I think, you know, we, we are gathering information on this, but it's not easy because nobody is saying to us what they're doing exactly. And our information requests for our own employers are <laughs> they just sit there because nobody's... Okay, who could do that? Somebody should do that. If it's not going to be you because you don't represent those hotels, or workers in those, who could it be? Could it be the governor? Could it be the mayor? Could it be the hotel and lodging, uh, you know, uh, industry association? 
Um, yeah, you need well, to bring somebody in to, to make sure that uh, they are providing information so you can structure a reopening with that information? Yeah, absolutely. There should be uh, some intervention and some, uh, as I said, the, our whole community depends on uh, the perception of travelers that we're a safe place. So I don't think there's too much of this that we can do. The question is, is it, are we doing too little? And we should address that. Mm -hmm. uh, but absolutely, yes, there, there needs to be, uh, there need to be some understandings and guidelines about hotel operations as we resume. Absolutely, there has to be testing. Uh, the notion that we don't do public testing and that testing is something that we should reserve for special cases is, is not correct. And the fact is, healthcare workers that we also represent should be tested every week. So, so should hotel workers be tested. We're taking care of those people. We're sharing the same building with everybody's germs. They're worried about us you know, as well. I mean, how healthcare workers are going is, it, it, you know, they're worried about their own health as well as, as guests. And so we have to address this in a comprehensive way. Hawaii needs clear standards. We are, we are doing our best to help develop them. And uh, we are in, in discussion with some people that want to talk about this. And we do hope to, we do hope to attract the attention of somebody. Well, let, me, uh, let me ask you one, one last question, Eric. And it, it looks down the end of the tunnel here. You know, a lot of people, I mean, obviously the hotel industry is the most important industry in the state. It's the engine of our economy. When you close it down, you're closing down our economy. It's, it's that simple. Uh, when you're opening up, you're opening up our economy again. Uh, and so I, and I really have, I have, I have one major overriding question here. Um, it, it, you know, we need to establish a reputation in the world about offering coronavirus free um, tourism. We, we, we have to sell our cleanliness, if you will, our non-virus industry. Uh, mm -hmm. to the world, then people will come back without fear, okay? Um, so clearly, we're gonna have to fold that into the restart, our own special Hawaii re restart. So my question to you is, uh, what do you see at the end of the tunnel here? What do you see as, as, a, as the, the, the state of the industry, the differences in the industry, both on the hotel side, the management side, the capital side, and on the labor side, when we get through this, I know it's a it's an early question, but I wonder if you have thoughts about how this is going to evolve, what it's going to look like later. Well, just you know, in terms of Hawaii, I, I think there were many legitimate questions before any of this started about how much is too much, and and um, you know, I think there's opportunities here as well. You know, this is a chance to reboot tourism, and to and to find other things as well, so our economy isn't so dependent on tourism. We're in the industry, but it's obvious to anyone looking at Hawaii today or Vegas or any place that is dependent on uh, tourism that, that we need a broader base. This is an opportunity for us to, to do those things. This is an opportunity for us to really decide together how many tourists should be here uh, and, and preserve our quality of life for our residents. This is an opportunity to do that as well. As you said, we have a, we have a good reputation as a healthy place and we should pound that in and make sure that we have our share of tourists. But to, you know, to be a healthy place and to have confidence that we're receiving tourists from healthy places, people need to be tested. And, and you know, people need to be tested. That's just simple. And yet the government's not doing it. And it's crazy. So you know, unless we can unless we can uh, operate a, a a good regimen of consistent testing, so that people know if they're sick or not, which people don't know right now. Twenty percent of COVID positive people have no symptoms, can't get a test under current rules. We, they can't know if they're sick. They're, they're contagious. We have to have testing, 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 and we have to have it in our hotels, our healthcare industry, in order for us to keep to be safe. If we're not safe, how are we going to market ourselves as being safe? And we will need our, our guests as well. I can't imagine the state should just open its doors to everybody. How are we going to know if people are sick or not? And they need testing in those places too. So if tourism is going to resume, 
you know, yes, we have a chance to reboot it. I would like to start re-envisioning what Hawaii looks like and should look like and, and can be. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to re, you know, rethink things. Um, but, but we're not going to get any business back, not safely, unless there's widespread testing regimes, not just here, but in the places we're getting our tourists from. And so this is just a, an emerging issue. The testing issue is controversial in the sense that the federal government, the state government are all saying, we don't really need that much testing. Well, they're just wrong on that. And they're, they're justifying the policy based on the lack of testing kits and the refusal to spend the money to do the testing. Uh, it is expensive. But unless we do it, we don't know who's sick. We can't contain contagions, uh, blooms. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't assure anybody that this is a safe place to come. And so they should get over this. The state and the federal government should get over this. Let's get real testing done on a mass basis, and especially focused on our essential workers who need that right now in order to protect themselves and their families. Yeah, and with that, we can, we can um, preserve our reputation as a healthy place. We can restart our, uh, our tourism sector, and we can therefore restart our economy. There's lots more to discuss, Eric. I hope we can circle back and cover it as this goes forward. Uh, that's Eric Gill, um, Unite Here, Local 5. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me. Double hot. Right.